Hi, everyone. I'm just going to wait a few minutes and then we'll get started. Looks like Rob's here. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good and morning. Robert Garver. Hello. Good morning. <clears throat> I just want to wait a minute or two and then we'll get started. Robert, are you that cold? You're wearing a sweater. It's still summer. <laughs> I don't know. I woke up this morning. It was 67 degrees inside my house. And that's a little chilly for me. That is cold. It was 47 outside. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So it's about 10.02. We'll get started. This is the meeting for it. So for those that come in later, it's fine. Uh, for today's mastermind, I want to go over the buyer agency agreement and give you guys some tips and to how to fill it out, how to present it to your buyers. Before we get started, what are you guys seeing out there um, when you're contacting the listing agents? Are they providing a percentage or are they telling you just submit your offer and submit what you 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 know what you want to get paid? What are you guys seeing out there? Hello, for me so far, both. Um, I have an agent who told me right away uh, how much the seller is offering. And also I had people who told me just send it and see what happened. And then if if they are asking you just to make your offer, what what type of conversation are you having with the buyer to let them know, you know, what your fee is, um, how you're going to structure it in the offer? So, so far with my clients, I'm being good. So they so far they say they're gonna pay my fee. So that's why I'm no I'm I'm no worry right now. So I'm gonna present an offer now. It's gonna see if it's gonna be accepted because they're telling me that they are multiple offers. So it's still in the process. Um. Yeah, so it's still pretty new. I mean, where I am in, I noticed like in Bergen County, I do see that when I did schedule some showings, they just told me, oh, it's 2% or two and a half. But I've noticed uh, some of you guys been sharing some feedback you're receiving um, where the agent is just telling you, hey, just submit your offer and uh, the seller will decide if they're going to take it or not. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go over the buyer agency agreement. And then this is the opportunity, guys. There's no, the only time you, it's a wrong question is if you don't ask. This is our opportunity to really get your questions out. So don't be shy. Please ask. Um, so let me just ask a question based on the previous conversation. So yes. if, the, if the listing agent just says, look, just submit your offer and we'll see if the seller accepts it. So does that say to us that we should be submitting an offer and writing on the offer that we expect two and a half percent? Correct. Okay, just wanted to check. Yep. So my conversation would be with the buyer, hey, my fee is two and a half. So you have a buyer agency agreement for two and a half, or you um, amend your, your buyer agency agreement and include the addendum for two and a half. And then when you're writing the offer, you're going to send a request in the seller pays two and a half along with the offer. You're going to send a cooperating broker agreement with the two and a half. I still didn't understand it. Don't we're, we're going to go over it. I'm okay. going to share my screen. So just give me one second. <laughs> All right, so everybody sees my dot loop, correct? It should say buyer test. Okay. So I created a buyer um, loop. So uh, here is, as you guys know, you should all know, there's four different types of buyer agency agreement. There is an exclusive buyer agency agreement. Then we have, if you scroll down, you'll see there is a non-exclusive buyer agency agreement. 
And then we also have a non-exclusive buyer agency agreement with rebate. And then we have an exclusive buyer agency agreement with rebate. Rebate is if you're offering to pay back the buyer portion of portion of your commission. So if you're giving out like 1% or a certain amount, now you can include that type of buyer agency agreement. And I, and I see some of you shaking your head like, no way, we're not doing that. But you guys need to know that it does exist. It's there. All right. So here's the exclusive buyer agency agreement. It is five pages. Uh, hopefully one day we will have an one agreement page. that's going to be shorter for now. Let me just mute everybody. And then if you guys need to speak, you can unmute yourself. <clears throat> okay. So, if you don't, I just want to make a comment. Like I, I um, had uh, one of our attorneys, Adam, look at the um, agreement to try to shorten it. And New Jersey has a lot of required language and minimum fonts. So um, it's going to be very, very limited what we could do, if anything, because they say if the font is too small, it's not allowed. It's kind of like hiding it. So I want everybody to know that I've heard that it's too long and I've tried my, I've tried my best to do something that protects us without, um, violating the uh the consumer provisions from the governor so anyway and um before you wrap up ask about if anybody's having issues with rentals with the exclusive agreement as well yeah so that's a good question um so as you guys know there was a lot of questions about uh is the owner now responsible to pay half of the commit half of the broker fee but as of right now the owner can still request that the uh tenant pays for the one month broker fee are you guys having a hard time getting the tenants to sign the tenancy agency agreement i know you guys do rentals so I just haven't had any rentals, Sedona. I, I wanted to answer. I think most of my agents are having more of a hard time, you know, with the landlord, but now we've gone over, you know, um, it again, and that, you know, uh, it's not a violation of fair housing to ask for the tenant to pay the fee or to only show the property to those tenants who are willing to pay the fee still waiting for that third party agreement, hopefully to come through from New Jersey Realtors, which allows us to collect that fee. Right. And hopefully that will come along soon. But I think that was the hardest that my agents, some of them were taking it as zero in hopes that they were gonna rent it themselves. You know, It was kind of like, uh, you know, two weeks before they listed another apartment in the same house and didn't charge a fee. And then all of a sudden we're asking the landlord to pay a fee. So obviously they hit, you know, a stumbling block, but we've worked around that with the different responses to who can be shown to if they're willing to pay the fee. Another thing I just want to add about the tenant is you never give the lease or the keys to the tenant without collecting the broker's fee and the security deposit. Do not tr do not trust that they will pay you because we've had cases where our agent did not get their money and now the tenant moved in and they refused to pay. And the um, New Jersey MLS listing agreement, which I know most of you are on Gordon State, but they did go as far in the listing agreement to say that the um, listing agent needs to certify to the landlord that the fee has been paid. If not, that or that they will not grant occupancy until that fee is paid. Yeah, so just make sure I know um, I was working with Rob over the weekend. Sometimes things just happened during a holiday where everything is closed, just remember, do not exchange the keys until we collect the fee. All right, so here's the buyer agency agreement. By now you should have all written at least one, if not more. So we're just, I'm gonna go very slowly so we understand how to fill this agreement. As you know, it's a law by state of New Jersey uh, we are required to have this before we tour a home. 
please do not wait until you meet them at the parking lot to get the sign and then they refuse to sign it or after you show them the property. Can you imagine if you just said to them, hey, I'm going to email you this form that needs to be signed. And then when we meet at the property, you're going to sign it. And then that buyer introduces themselves as a tester from the real estate commission. Imagine having that conversation with them. So please make sure you have this signed before you tour the property. But you can definitely email it to them ahead of time, but they need to sign it before you tour the property. So buyer's name. Now, some of you said, what happens if there's four buyers or if I'm meeting one buyer? As long as one of the buyers is going to be on the contract, I'm okay with them having a sign. But if you find out that when you're submitting an offer and now there's two, just add their name to this agreement and have them sign it. No big deal. So buyer's name, brokerage firm, Remax Select. Licensee, you'll put your name. And then the agency where it says number one, you're going to add the buyer's name here as well. Now, <clears throat> this is where a lot of you have questions. Agency disclosure. Some of you are just putting buyer agent only. That's fine. But you should also consider number two, buyer's agent and disclose dual agent if the opportunity arises. Why? What happens if you have a six-month or 12-month agreement, even three-month, and uh, where that client is looking to buy a property, you end up having a listing. You want to be able to represent both. So if your client feels comfortable with just a buyer agent only, that's fine. You can always amend this. This is why we have a, an addendum that you can amend your agreement, which I'll go over next. But also, there's also a buyer agent and designated agent if the opportunity arises. So that's also another, which we had uh, did a mastermind between dual, uh, the difference between dual agency and designated agency. The term. So here's, you uh, guys have also brought to my attention, how can you get a stranger that calls you on the phone to sign an agreement for a long period of time? You shouldn't have a buyer sign an agreement for more than a day if you've never met them before. So why don't you, I've met clients for the first time and I only did one day because I don't know if I want to work with that buyer either. So this is what you're going to do. When somebody reaches out to you and they want to see a listing, the first thing you're going to do is before you have them sign the agreement is you're going to go and call the listing agent, figure out if they're offering any type of commission or compensation for the buyer. Then this will make it so much easier. So you're going to tell the buyer, hey, uh, you know, I do have to have an agreement signed in order to show you the property. We're going to do a one day agreement where this agreement can expire at midnight tonight or you can do it for a week, whatever you feel comfortable, whatever the buyer feels comfortable. If it's the first time you're meeting them, maybe you should just do it for that one day where you're showing them properties. And then at that time you meet them, that's your time to shine and show your value and have them commit to work with you. That would be your opportunity. Don't try and rush it and you just show the property and you're out. And uh, because a lot of times we have found out that those type of buyers actually end up going back and buying that same property you have shown them. So just put some time into it. Don't go back to back with showings, like leave some time room to meet with them. Maybe after the showings, you can say, hey, let's get grab a cup of coffee so I can actually go in detail with what this agreement means. And no, what I don't, I, I, yes. I don't, I have a question for the group. Would it be helpful if we had um, one of our attorneys and um, either yourself or myself kind of go through and say, hey, it's Rob of the Broker Record. I just wanted to thank you for uh, considering working with us. I wanted to share with you a recent change that happened. I have our attorney, Adam, on. Here is this agreement we're asking you to sign. And then maybe have one where we say, you know, if, you know, at the end of it, if you are ever unsatisfied, paragraph three gives you the ability to. Uh, paragraph three gives you the ability to uh, give us written notice and cancel the agreement. At that point, you're only committed to uh, compensate us on anything we showed you. I hope this was helpful. Like I'm just curious, would that be something that would be used? And then maybe there's one where, if we're doing an extended period of time, say, look, you know, although the agreement's for six months. Either party can cancel with whatever that cancellation provision is. 
So I'll leave it up to the audience to let me know if that would be worthwhile. Yeah, we'll, we'll let the team decide. I just feel like if we involve like attorneys and broker record or regional manager, they would probably be like, why am I having all these people if this is like an agreement for, for me to tour property? But that's, I guess it's like case by case. If somebody refuses to sign it, maybe. Yes, friend. I, I think maybe it might be helpful if we highlight that they you know, the kind for people who are having issues, if they want to highlight the cancellation period to them, they can cancel it with three days notice if they had to. Right. People are a little more uh, understanding if they know that they're not going to be married to you for life, right? Sometimes they feel that way and uh, say, listen, we can get the divorce. You know, it just takes a three day written notice and we can be divorced, but you would be obligated. So I think Learning how to explain it to everyone is key in getting them. So when you want the C and, and, and Fran, what what about you know? Don't you think the public, especially if they don't know us, they just think we're just you know we're looking to trap them and make a commission. But if we talk about hey, you know, Remax has been in business for fifty three years, we pride ourselves on repeat business. So you know, this hopefully is you know like something to that effect to like allay their fears. Because I think everybody thinks, oh my God, they're just trying to extort 11,000 from me or 9,000 or 20, you know what I mean? And in reality, we're, we're about building a relationship, you know, a right. long relationship. I have, it's I education have... all the way around. That's really, you know, in scripts, like you said, they should practice in front of the mirror, you know, what they're going to say and have some key words to say to people about, you know, that what you're here helping them try to do, forget about the commission. Let's just talk about what we're trying to accomplish for you, you know? I absolutely I agree know. that uh, a note from, from the broker of record as opposed to an attorney, because I think an attorney does send fear waves through people, um, but from the broker of record, kind of like welcoming them to our brokerage, you know, and, and giving them a secure feeling about you know, we've been in business for so long and, and, you know, we're not looking to, <laughs> you know, do anything um, that uh, should really concern you. I think that'd be a great idea, Rob. So, Robert, you think it'd be better just uh, having myself go through it without an attorney? I do. Attorney will, okay. Because I, cause I think, the, I think the attorney people get a little bit defensive when they're reading something from an attorney. And then they might, then they might feel like they need to get an attorney involved before they sign it. Exactly. This is just like a, like I say, this is like a, a welcome to the family type note. Yeah. Cause I, honestly, I believe if everybody uh, gave us the opportunity to uh, explain why it's, why it's being done, that they would have, many reservations about working this way but i think a lot of people in absence of clarity are just going to be in fear right yeah and that's gonna and, you know and, and i know a lot of our competitors aren't investing the time to learn the correct process so they might be trying to shortcut it and you know somebody might think that it's okay not to sign an agreement right yeah so i i, I think I, I really do believe that this is like this is almost like a soft sell welcome to the family type idea, and I think it's great. So, um, if there's, I, I can't see how many people are on the, the call now. Don't I? About twenty nine. So, if uh, if you feel like it would be helpful, or if you feel it's a bad idea, either way, put a comment in. And if there's a reasonable amount of people, I'll do my best to get one done by Friday and play it on the Friday, uh, the Friday call. Maybe you should do a personal guarantee like that. You know, you have the faith in your agents are going to provide the best service for them and uh, you're, you're behind them. And if something were to happen that you would be there to stand, you know, to, to work it out and make sure that everything was being, that was being promised was being delivered like a personal guarantee letter that goes with you from you. So Fran, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a meeting in Secaucus tomorrow and we can discuss this. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm gonna make a leadership meeting in Secaucus tomorrow and we'll discuss this. 
Okay, yeah. sounds good. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna go back to- I, I wanna question. add one quick thing, Donna, yeah. because I feel like people are still confused on this part. Yes. As a listing agent and someone calls you direct to show your property, you do not need a buyer's agency agreement. Agents are very well, confused about that. I'll be open. It's you, open. St you still have an obligation as a listing Sorry. agent representing the seller to show the property. They do not know that anything they disclose to you at that showing could be, uh, you know, relate to the seller because they're an unrepresented buyer. Correct. Correct. But Correct. I'm saying, I know within our I, I'm finding people are still confused on that part. Yeah, so if you are the listing agent and you have an unrepresented, I'm going to just mute everybody because I hear a lot of background noise. So, um, all right. If you have a listing and you have a buyer that calls you directly unrepresented, you still are obligated to show them the property. However, if they choose to work with you and submit an offer, you definitely need a buyer agency agreement at that time. Correct, but I'm saying I don't think agents no, understand that part yet. So now at this call, whoever is on, now they know that if they have a listing and they have an unrepresented buyer, that you do not need to have them sign a buyer agency agreement. However, if that buyer decides to buy your listing, then you do need to have them sign the agreement. I have Correct. a question, Edona. Yes. Or they could be unrepresented. And they would then have to have their attorney draw their agreement right. for them. But if they want you to work with them, you do right. need to buy our agency agreement. I have, I have a question, Adorna. Yes. If you're the listing agent and you get a call that I am interested in seeing the property, if you show the property anyway, the buyer has to go with you. No, I'm, I'm finding people are saying, I'm going to represent myself. Right. And not sign any of your forms. Correct. And they have the right to do that. <clears throat> I think so, educating everyone um, about, about that ability. So, to... Does the so, law say that uh, we have to have the buyer agreement signed before we can show it? If you're the listing agent, you're obligated to still show the property. No, but if they're coming directly to you to see, then they have to buy it with you. They don't have to because at that point you don't have an agreement signed. Now, Rebecca, I am going to just go back a little bit. Like if I have a listing, right, and I do have buyers that want to see the property, it's not going to stop me from having an agreement signed, but they don't have to, right? If I choose to have that buyer saying, hey, I'll, yep, I'll show it to you, but, and they don't give me a hard time getting it signed, it's not, we don't have to not have it. You know, you can still have them sign the agency agreement. I've already had a case where an agent told me her attorney was going to be representing her. Right. Which then at that point, obviously they have the right, the buyer can be, uh, can choose to be represented by an attorney. And I would, I would choose very carefully the words in the listing to say that all offers and negotiations go through the listing agent only. Yep. Not leaving it wide open for them to ask who the seller's attorney is because they don't have the right to have that information unless you leave it wide open like that. Like you got to be really careful and say all offers and negotiation or the seller requests all offers and negotiations be presented only through the listing agent. So if they have an attorney representing them, they've got to send the offer to you. You don't have to disclose your seller's attorney's information. That's proprietary. All right. So I'm just going to continue back on the buyer exclusive agreement because I did promise I was going to go line by line. And then uh, if we have time towards the end, we can definitely go over other documents as well. But <clears throat> Frank is right. Do not leave it open because you don't have to share the seller's information. So make sure you include that on your listings. All right, so I just kind of filled it out so you guys see it on my screen. So buyer Joe Smith, brokerage Remax Select, or um, Signature Homes, right? So make sure you write the correct brokerage. 
licensee, it would be your name, and then you will put in the uh, Joe Smith. Here, by designate buyer, designate broker as a buyer exclusive agent for the purpose of searching for locating and purchasing real estate by buyer in the following areas. Please. Here, remember, your buyer can have multiple buyer agency agreement. They can choose to have one agent for Bergen County only, and they can go to South Jersey and have somebody and sign an exclusive agency agreement with someone that's only Ocean County, for example. So make sure you be specific. If you're not willing to drive from, let's say, Bergen County to Atlantic County, don't say the entire state of New Jersey if you're not willing to be there for your buyer. Okay, so just be explicit where you want to uh, show where you're willing to drive. How far? Donna, I can't hear it. I lost you. We lost you, Donna. Yeah, we lost you, Donna. Somebody, somebody kicked me out from being a host. Being a a host. Oh, oh. I'm back. They kicked me out. <laughs> it's a tough crowd. Tough crowd. All right, so I'm gonna open my screen back. All right, so here we go again. All right, so here, just put in the location that you're willing to drive. So Bergen County, be specific. If you're willing to drive all over New Jersey, then by all means, you can either leave it blank or write New Jersey, entire New Jersey. Don't put North Jersey, South Jersey, because what does that really mean? Where is the location? So Bergen County, Essex County, Hudson, et cetera whatever you feel comfortable, wherever you're willing to drive. So here, let's just say I'm gonna choose a buyer agent and disclose dual agent. I am meeting them for the first time today. If you've been working with the buyer prior to August 1st and they took a break, I had a buyer who took a break for the month of August and then now they reached out to me now. So I had to tell them, hey, you know, there has been a change and I do need to have an agency agreement. If they already know that they want to work with me, then you don't have to do a one day agreement. At that point, you ask them, what do they feel comfortable with? I might just do three months or whatever you want. So let's just say I'll just do till the end of the year, December 31st. Or, you know, you can leave this blank. You can pick days. You can put five days, seven days, 14 days, whatever you feel comfortable. So. Number five, commission to broker. So this is where I've seen a few agency agreements and I just wanna go over and take some time. And so we all understand after this call. We at Remax Select, we are not collecting our retainer fee. So that's always gonna be no retainer fee, at least for this time that we're not. Use that to your advantage. Be like, hey, I'm not gonna collect a retainer uh, fee from you. Percentage. I've seen where you guys are doing your homework, you're calling the listing agent, you you find out you're showing the three properties, they're all offering 2%, you're putting zero here. Guess what? You're getting zero unless you attach the addendum making uh, change in the commission to the 2%. You cannot, I would not recommend you ever put zero even if you have the opportunity to, uh, even if the buyer says, I can't afford you, you have to have a percentage. If you put zero, you're getting zero. So there's, I'm gonna show you where you can change this agreement to say that the buyer only wants you to show them properties where the listing, uh, where the seller's offering the commission. Uh, but this place right here, you should not leave empty or zero because then you're getting a zero, okay? so. You need to have that discussion. The point of this whole thing is that the buyer, you disclose it to the buyer what your fee is. You cannot say zero. You can tell the buyer, hey, my fee is 2%. And then they're going to tell you, I can't afford to pay you 2%. You're going to have to tell them, okay, well, I'm going to, we can still see properties for the most part. Maybe the seller will already offer a commission or a concession, which is two different things, guys. Or we can still submit an offer where we request that the seller pays the commission. But will there be a chance where they are not going to pay it? Absolutely. So you need to make sure you have those conversations with your buyer. Also, the disadvantage of doing that, if the buyer cannot afford to pay you, if there's multiple offers and 
you know, you have, let's say even five buyers and four buyers are already paying their agent directly. And now your offer is saying uh, the seller has to pay you, right? That's also putting your buyer in a disadvantage there with multiple offers. However, please do not cross this out. Remember, we can only pre-fill. We cannot put a, a line through any of this type of, any on this contract. We are not authorized to do that, okay? You can add only on the blank fields, but you cannot cross it out. So I've seen that too. So please don't do that. So 2%, whatever you want. I'm going to share you guys a story with me. I went to my buyer and I said, hey, my commission is XOXO. The seller is only going to pay a portion. Now you're going to be required to pay the remainder. Guess what? They agreed. They said, that's fine. So you guys can get paid by both parties. Okay. If your percentage, if you want to charge your buy 3% and the seller's offering two, you can get two from the seller, one from the buyer. Make sense? Okay. You can also agree if they don't agree on a percentage, they only want to give you a, a fixed amount. That's fine. This is where you have the opportunity. Okay. The point of this agreement is that the buyer should, should know exactly what they need to pay when they find your property. They, it should not be a, and a guest amount like, oh, 2% or the higher amount of what the seller is offering. You cannot do, you cannot write that on this agreement. It has to be a fixed amount. But I don't know, I have a question. Yes, Shelly. This 2%, as soon as you write, then they will say, no, we are not going to give you anything. Please, but Shelly, if you go over the whole entire agreement, they're mm -hmm. not. Because this doesn't mean that the buyer is paying you the 2%. You're going to say, my fee is 2%. Let me show you how this gets paid out. If they're not willing to pay you and they don't listen, then don't represent them. Okay. You do not have a zero amount. Yes, we so, are those buyers. So, Adona, yes. the part where it says, um, don't show me any properties where the seller is not paying compensation. It's going now, to be on the next paragraph. Yeah. No, no, I, I understand. But what I'm saying is, in my opinion, um, you can always put that into the agreement. Like, I think that's kind of foolish to, to do. You know what I mean? Like, you never know. Everything's dependent upon your offer. Correct. Right. That's correct. And, and did you get a sense of, like, is it two thirds of the agents are saying submit an offer and we'll tell you what we're paying or are 80% of the people saying my, my seller is offering two, two and a half, three percent. It's what, based what's on the, the consensus. It's I, I, I think right now it's 50 50, according to, to the agents on this call, they're saying some are, are already telling us like the percentage and then some of them saying just submit your offer. Most of them are saying percentage. Percentage, right? Okay. Yeah. They, the seller is giving 2% minus the MLS they mentioned. So you're seeing most, is anybody seeing uh, most um, listing agents uh, saying submit the offer? Yeah, if, yeah. If give your best you're... offer and then the seller will decide how much to pay. Right, so, so, but are you seeing that being the majority or are you no, just no, saying that you see No, it? few, few, few of them, about five so, or six. Right, is there anybody on the call that's seeing the majority of their, um, when they go to show properties, the majority of the listing agents saying, Hey, submit an offer and, you know, we'll tell you what we're going to pay based on the offer. So we have what, 30 people on a donut? Right, about. So there's nobody that, nobody that's, that's had that as a, a majority. No, not me. Okay. Well, mine, is, mine has been half and half. Half and half. Okay. So, um, and Rebecca, since, um, you know, you probably get a lot of feedback from your team, um, are you uh, in, like if an if a buyer doesn't have the money to pay it, are you going to not show them uh, properties where the listing agent says we're not compensating? Is that best practice in your opinion? No, no, and nobody has um, nobody has experienced yet one that has not been offering. Okay, okay, maybe we're uh, making too much out of nothing. Thank you. Hey, 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 Rob, uh, this is yes. Paul. Uh, I, I submitted an offer. Um, I didn't even ask the agent what they were offering. 
and I, I wanted to get the offer from my buyer. So I put a, a commission on the buyer side uh, okay. being paid by the buyer. And I put, you know, nothing being paid by the seller. The offer got accepted. And then the seller was still paying out commission, even though I submitted my offer without them paying any commission. So, I mean, that was a good thing. I was like, wow, <laughs> great. <laughs> but that was a, the opposite. <laughs> I just, uh, well, what good, I do is I good, good to I hear a story that goes that way, Paul. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll turn it back to a donut. What I'm saying is I, I normally don't even ask uh, how much they're paying out of commission. I just submit my offer with the, with the, with the seller paying commission. You know, it's, uh, that's why that third option you were talking about, you know, don't show me any homes that are an offering commission. I, I don't agree with that either. Right. The only thing is that sometimes when you do have a buyer that cannot afford to pay the commission, yes, of course, everything is negotiable from both the buyer and the seller side. However, if I'm just throwing it out there, if you wanted to charge 3%, the seller's offering two, now the buyer has to just pay you 1%, whatever. It's not fixed, right? But I would, you know, I would take the extra step to find out if the seller is offering something because it will make a difference on what your buyer wanted to offer on the property. If they have to also consider paying your commission, whatever amount that is, they might not be as competitive as somebody else that's submitting the offer. So if the seller is offering the commission, just take it from them. You know, don't make your buyer pay it. Unless you're submitting, there's multiple offers and your buyer says, I'll do anything I can to make sure I get this property, then you can let them know, well, the seller's offering commission. We can go back and say that you'll pay my commission and then they save money on that side. Yes, you can do it that way. Shelly, did you have a question? No, okay. I don't know how. Well, let's, let's, let's not overlook the fact too that if that calling the listing agent to find out about the commission is a good thing because it gives you an opportunity to start a conversation with the listing agent too, because somewhere down the road, if your client decides that they want to buy this house and you've already established a relationship with this listing agent, that's a plus for you and your buyer. Yep. I've, um, I haven't had any issues. The few people that are agents I have called, I actually took Rob's advice and I'm like, wow, thank you for answering the phone. You must be receiving hundreds of calls. They're like, oh yeah, it's been overwhelming, but hey, we just have to get through it. I'm like, absolutely. And it was so much easier because then they're the one who followed up with me for feedback, right? Because they already had my information. They're like, okay, this agent is on point, scheduled the showing, inquired questions. I didn't just say, hey, what are you paying the commission? I said, hey, is there anything else that I should make my buyer aware of what the seller's expectations are? So that way it started a conversation. I'm not just being greedy, find, trying to find out what my commission is, right? So I started a conversation. I showed them the property. Believe it or not, the two uh, calls that I did make, both those offers were accepted just because I had a, a, a longer conversation than just saying, hey, what's the commission? Great. And then submitting the offer. Sh Shelly, what was the question? I'm sorry, because you got cut off before. Yeah. Yeah. So no, the question was like, my main thing is my buyers would prefer to go with the sellers paying out commission. The only thing is since we write there, we will explain to them, but sometimes they're a little hesitant to sign a paper where we check mark number 60, the line 60 with the 2% or 1%, whatever we put there. Right, but you're gonna tell them that as you go on to this agreement that you can choose the option where they don't have, it clearly we can, yes. that they're not paying you directly. It's going to come from the seller. Yes. yes, but then they will tell us that time, just remove this because on top of this line, it says buyer is responsible to pay. Right, but it, then you're going to tell them to read the agreement. And and Shelly, you, if you leave it blank, if you left a zero, right, which mm -hmm. you can, that means you're getting, you're not protected. You do have the addendum, which I'll go over where you can say this, uh, this agreement is a um, the buyer agency agreement dated September 3rd has been amended to reflect that the buyer commission is now 2% when you're submitting the offer. You can do it that way. I don't recommend it. I was speaking to one of our uh, leaders this morning and I said, I still wouldn't feel comfortable. What if you forget to, to get that addendum signed? You're not, now you're getting zero. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now. 
This does have a protection period in the event within your buyer can decide to uh, either terminate the agreement. You can choose to terminate the agreement. It could also be expired. If any of those happens, guys, please remember, you have to keep track of the properties you have shown them. When they do decide to either terminate or the agreement has been expired, you're going to have to send them an email within 10 days of the expiration or termination to that buyer telling them, hey, here's the following houses that I have shown you in the last week, month, two months, one day, whatever it is. That's your protection period. Now, how many days you want to be protected? That's up to you. You can choose 30 days. You can choose 60, 90, 180, depending how long you want to be protected in the event that buyer buys that property. Just remember that, um, you know, the buyer, if the buyer fails to provide that list, for example, let's say you are, you get a call from a buyer, you, uh, you have to ask them like if they had already signed a buyer agency agreement. If they tell you no, it clearly says here that if the buyer did not send you a list, let, let's say they did work with somebody and they have seen properties, if they choose to not give you that list, the buyer will be liable for it to pay two commissions. That Now that's up to the other broker if they want to sue the buyer or not. But then they would be liable to pay two commissions. So if you had a buyer agency agreement, let's say um, for Monmouth Ocean County, or let's say Hudson County, you had a, a buyer agency agreement, and now the buyer decides to terminate the agreement with you, and they go and sign with somebody else, and uh, they don't uh, show that they don't tell the other agent that they were working with someone else, and they have seen properties you can file something to to get your commission if they had seen any of their properties that you had shown them. So uh, just keep that in mind. Don't forget, please keep track. The way I've been telling you guys is I always have it a habit when I'm meeting a buyer, I give them a folder, a Remax folder. I print out the listings that I'm showing them, right? I give them the customer report with my business card. And then I print out the full report for me now just have them initial it. Be like, can you just initial it? Or, you know, ask them for feedback. Like, hey, what did you think of 123 Main Street? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? Have proof that you have shown them the properties. We're probably not going to see a lot of it, but maybe I'm sure there will be cases. So just keep that in mind. Protect what you, the amount of, of properties you're showing to them. Commission from the seller. So under the New Jersey law, seller may offer a commission to a buyer broker as a cooperating uh, broker. If the seller authorizes the payment of any commission to broker, that amount will be credited towards the commission due to broker under this agreement. That's pretty clear cut, right? So here's the options. Now the buyer can say, you know what? I agree with Rob and, and Robert and Paul. You know, I would tell my buyer, don't limit yourself to only see properties that are offering commission. Because what happens when you're calling those listing agents, they say, oh, just submit whatever amount uh, on your offer. Are you eliminating those type of transactions, like those houses to your buyer? So maybe just say, but if your buyer is hesitant and say, no, I want to know upfront if I'm going to be required, then you can just choose the do not introduce buyer to any other properties where the following condition exists, or they might choose introduce buyer to all properties that the broker believes would be acceptable to buyer, regardless whether the commission is being offered. Right now, they can also choose include in any offer to seller, the seller will pay the broker commission. So there you go. So you can check box one, introduce buyer to all properties, and then include in any offer to seller, the seller will pay the broker's commission. So regardless if they're offering or not, your buyer only wants you to submit offers where the seller is going to be liable to pay the commission. Questions on that portion? So in such a case, we can, we are, we are checkboxing two, right? Correct. And then we can put, we can explain to the, uh, to the buyer that we are going to take it as seller's concession or if the seller is going to directly pay us. Am I right? So two different things, concession and commission. The concession goes directly to the buyer, and then the commission okay. goes to you as the uh, agent. Now, yes, 
if the seller is not offering any type of compensation or they say, oh, just to make your offer, can you go and ask them for 2% towards uh, buyer's closing costs? Yes, but you can use that 2% concession for your commission. Okay, so at the addendum, we'll have to put the 2% the seller pays as a buyer's compensation, agent compensation, right? On your addendum, which I'll show you, you're going to say that the buyer agency agreement is amended to reflect that the bro buyer's uh, broker commission is now 2%. So that's your agreement between you and the buyer. So no, I'm talking about the offer. When I write at the end of uh, out there, I have to put 2%. The correct. Has to give a On couple. the seller side, yes. Yeah, on the but, seller side, and then you're going to include the cooperating broker compensation agreement, at, you know, submitting that you won the 2%, 2 half, whatever amount from the but, seller. But at the beginning, when I asked the listing agent, they already made clear that the seller won't pay any commission. Then also we do the same? Correct, because it's negotiable. Regardless what they if they agree to or not, you can still submit an offer requesting. Now, can they come back and the client is saying no? Yes, they can do that. Okay, we're just trying our luck. Okay. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the broker's duty. This is something if you wanted to add, they left a few places where you can add whatever you want. Let's say you have just something to stand out, right? If they're moving out of town, you can say, hey, I'll schedule something extra, whether you'll help them move into the home, you'll, you'll, hire movers or you'll hire a cleaning service for them you'll buy them dinner whatever again optional this is they're just giving you extra lines if you wanted to do something extra for that buyer this is the buyer's duty <clears throat> just remember the difference between dual agent this designated agency which we had already went over if you guys still have questions contact me directly i'll get into that another time additional terms so here uh, I had added buyer broker and buyer agree that this agency agreement may be amended at any time. I write this on all my agency agreement because I want to be able to amend it. If if I had, if my buyer said, don't I can only pay you one and a half or 1% or two, but I feel like I deserve more. Not I feel, I know I want more then I'm going to make sure that I tell them, okay, well, I want to be able to amend this in the event the seller does offer something. I want to be able to amend it to make what I really wanted to make, which was three, three and a half, whatever it is that I worked it out with the buyer. So this kind of gives you an opportunity that, you know, you can amend your agreement. It's optional, but it's there for you. I just want, I don't want my buyer to say, oh, I never agreed that this can be amended. So now I'm just closing that we can amend it. So if you chose to write one and now the, you know, the sell, the buyer can only pay you one and you're going to show them a house and they want to submit an offer and they're offering two, I want to be able to use the, uh, to amend my agreement to show the 2% so I can collect the two. Because remember, if your agreement is 1%, the seller's offering two, you can only collect one. The only time it works in our favor is if your agreement was three, the seller's offering two. Now you can get two from the seller, one from your buyer. Any questions on that? Okay. I'm going to show you guys the addenda. <clears throat> so you have to pick which, which exclusive agreement you had. So obviously I was working on the exclusive buyer agency agreement. You're going to write in the date that you had originally signed that agreement. So let's say if it was September 3rd, and this is where you can change the terms of that agreement. So you can say um, the buyer commission, the buyer broker commission is amended to reflect that it is now 2.5, right? Or you can do the opposite. Let's say you, you the buyer did agree to two and a half, but some circumstances happened and now they can only afford you one. Can you change it to make less? Yes, you can now change it to reflect less. You don't need to have them sign the whole five page agreement. So you're just changing the terms. I don't know if Fran Blakely is here, if she wants to add anything to this. 
No, I think it's just really important to remember to amend the agreement and to use this addendum. It's there for a reason to cover your bases because you want to make sure that you're going to get paid. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. So whatever is in your agreement, that's what you're getting paid. If somebody doesn't want to pay you, they're not understanding this, then I'll, don't work with them. It's okay. You're not going to win them all. There are lots of buyers out there, right? That need representation. Yeah. More buyers than we can probably all handle right now. So you can pick and choose who you want to work with. You I, work really hard. Yeah. I've shared with a lot of you in one of my meetings or trainings where I had a buyer who I was working with prior to August 1st. They were a referral. And when they wanted to see a property after August 1st, they blatantly they just told me that they didn't feel comfortable they felt like they were stuck in this contract with me and they're like why am I going to pay you just to show them the property so I said fine no problem then good luck to you they went to see a property with someone else where that agent asked them to sign they came back to me saying I am so sorry I didn't realize this was a law that I had to get it signed and I refused to work with them at that point because you know what my value is important I know what I bring to the table and Again, you don't have to go that route. If they come back to you, you choose to work with them. That's fine. But just know your value. If somebody doesn't want to pay you, then don't waste your time. Why would you want to show them properties if they're not going to want to pay you? Um, so these are the two agreements. Now, I do want to show you if the seller is offering the commission, please make it a habit. So I'm going to show you. Uh, we have about 10 minutes. So I'm going to show you the Real estate contract really quick if you haven't wrote, written any offers yet and the cooperating broker agreement. So <clears throat> I also want to mention the dual agency. Please remember, we are working on having our list updated, which I'm going to we're going to put in our new hub. We're going to share it with all of you. If it's a Remax Select it's a dual agency. Even if your office is in Tinton Falls and you're submitting an, uh, an offer from a listing of ours in Bergen County, let's say Franklin Lakes, it's a dual agency. Please make sure that you're going to pick um, both the seller and the buyer. Make sure you disclose it here. We're a dual agency. Okay. We also, you, at that point, you should be contacting the listing agent for them to send you the dual agency agreement they have signed. So you can have your buyer sign it too. Make sure you, the parties, go ahead, Fran. The buyer has their own dual agency. There you go. That's right. <laughs> they don't sign on the sellers. Okay. I know we have a lot of new forms. So it's yes. So make sure you're disclosing if it's a Remax select listing, it's a dual agency. Okay. So while you're writing the agent name here, which we'll go over, and it's a Remax Select, guess what? It's a dual agency. And you don't, you do have an obligation when the offer is going in to make sure both parties, even though they may have already signed the informed consent to dual agency, especially the seller, that this is a dual agency because that's what the uh, consumer information statement does, like say. As soon as it is a dual agency, both parties will be notified, you know, like you have to notify them. Um, so it's kind of like a double. It's like a so here is to line 591 declaration of brokers business relationship. This is where you also need to disclose it, that it's a dual agency or designated agency. OK, so two places in the contract. So here is where uh, you're going to add the commission. So if it's from the seller. 2%. Guys, the listing fees. That's another question. Do we charge a listing fee? If your seller is offering a commission, yes, go ahead and charge them a listing fee. If your seller is offering zero, you're not collecting a listing fee. All right. No buyer agent is going to pay you a listing fee if you're if the buyer is paying the commission. Please ask if they say yes, 2%, be like, is there a listing fee? Do, don't wait till the closing date and then we have to go back and forth for like $150 because I have fought a few and we did when it was in our favor, I did fight it or vice versa. So just ask them, be like, is there a listing fee? You're not even going to notice the $150 or $200, whatever they are charging. So just ask, be like, is there a listing fee? Because you know what? They're going to probably even appreciate that. Like, oh, wow. Right. 
So just ask, 200. Now, if you had a buyer agency agreement for three and the seller's offering two, this is where you're going to put in this closing, you're getting paid by both the seller and the buyer, okay? If your buyer is paying the commission and it's not coming from the seller, this is where you're going to put it, 2%. Or if you agree to five thousand dollars, what whatever it is, all right, not the concession. This is the commission. So let's just say the seller is only offering one percent commission minus a hundred dollars. Your buyer can request a concession. Now, if you had an agreement for two percent from the buyer, one percent comes from the seller. The, sell, the buyer can still take 1% concession from the seller and you're still getting 2% from your buyer. Total two. So one from the seller, the buyer is going to bring one extra percent, but they're also getting a concession. Is this confusing? Let me know if I need to rework it. Patrick had a question in the uh, chat. He wanted to know, can the buyer pay the MLS fee also since it's being deducted from the listing side? Um, I would say that it, it, I don't know if they could unless it's in the buyer agency agreement. Yeah, sure. if it's if it's on the buyer agency agreement that you can say minus, you need to know the listing fee, right? How so? Or you have to be okay with whatever. So if you put two percent, uh, my plus two hundred dollars or whatever it is, I don't see why not. As long as it's on your buyer agency agreement, and your buyer agreed. I don't see why not. All right, so here, so this is the contract. Any questions on this portion with the commission? All right, so I'm gonna show you really quickly the addendum, the cooperating broker compensation agreement. So if the seller is offering the commission, you're gonna put in the date you're submitting the offer. You're gonna put in a uh, name of the brokerage firm. So that's the listing side, their address, Remax Select, your office address the property address, the listing name, uh, listing agent name goes here, your name would go on this side. And then this is where you're gonna put in what the seller's offering. If the seller's offering 2%, you're gonna put 2%. If they're giving also a listing fee, I would put in here, minus 150 listing fee. Questions on that? I, I sent this together with my offer and I will not go to attorney. I will not bring my buyer to through attorney review until I have this signed by the listing agent. So this is where the seller's agent signs and then you as the buyer agent will sign. Make sure you have this. This is just to protect your commission guys. Okay, so that there's no questions back towards end of the closing. Somebody tells you, oh, you misunderstood. I didn't know. It's not 2%. Um, no, but they give it to us in a message. Before we show, when I ask them, right. send it to me on a message, they say 2%. But sometimes they don't put the MLSP. I always take the extra step and just ask them, be like, hey, what is the, what is your, uh, is there a listing fee? Because you know what? I want to build my report with that listing agent. I don't care if, if they want an extra 200 $300 from the fee, because I want them to know like, wow, like this person is actually going the extra mile that maybe others won't because they want to save 150 or $200. I don't care. I want to build my report. Be like, Hey, what's your listing fee? They could say zero. They can say a hundred, 200, whatever. And I'm like, okay, no problem. I'm not going to make it a big deal and fight on them for that. We're used to paying a listing fee, right? So there is no difference to that because they might just tell you 2%. I would just ask them, is there a listing fee? Just please remember, even if you have it in text, have this part of your transaction, make this a, make it a habit. This is required for you to protect your commission. Okay. Mm -hmm. so when they accept our offer that's when we should get the sign right you send this together with the offer mm -hmm. so when they send you a signed offer this form comes together questions guys any scenarios that you have come up with that you would like to run it by me this is your time <clears throat> um you know as if we see like rob said earlier you know state of new jersey is really strict 
So it's really hard to amend this and make this shorter just because of we have to follow the law too. And you know what? Wouldn't it be better? And a lot of you have mentioned say, hey, we're using the form that state of New Jersey requires. We didn't create it. State of New, you know, this comes directly from the state. So um that way no one can question what type of if you wrote your own language in, on this. So it's a standard form. Um, and I know you guys are seeing other brokerage using one page touring agreement that's not in compliance. Uh, Zillow has their own. We're also not using that form either just because it doesn't protect you guys. So uh, please don't use it. Just always think those first time home buyers, can they be a tester? Because we will be tested and you don't want to show them. Don't wait to sign this agreement on top of the car when you get to the property, have this signed beforehand. All right, if you guys don't have questions, um, this I'm gonna end the call. Thank you guys for being here. And um, please don't forget to register for the fall fun at the farm. Uh, it's next Saturday from 10 to one in Chester. If you have not registered, I did share the uh, link with all of you. So please make sure if you're planning to come sign register uh deadline is this friday so i hope you guys can come it's going to be a lot of fun so hope to see you guys there take care bye everyone thank you bye, -bye.